right, so picking up from uh, where we left off um, uh, with the UI, well, let's now talk about how we can uh, navigate in Blender, okay? Navigate as in how you work the camera, all right? Again, we are not talking about this recording camera, which when you press numpad zero is what it's seeing, okay? We're talking about the working camera right here, okay? So in order to uh, be uh, efficient in Blender, it is highly recommend you get a three button mouse. If not, you can emulate the numpad by going to edit and preferences, okay? Input, emulate three button mouse if you only have a trackpad with two buttons, okay? If you do that though, uh, you need to click on Alt right here or any of this, uh, choices that you have in order to uh, to to do that and it's a combination of the buttons I just can't remember now I haven't used that in a while again also if you don't have any numpad you can emulate the numpad by clicking that and then your alphanumeric number from 1 through 0 on top on the keyboard below the function keys they will uh, emulate the numpad so when you press number 1 there you get front so on and so forth as opposed to what it's supposed to be the shortcut for let's say your vertex mode edge mode when you're in edit mode okay so you lose something uh, by, but you gain what's kind of common right so let's continue into uh, our uh, navigation okay so if you have a three button mouse most likely the middle mouse button should scroll so obviously right here that is your um, well, you can call it zoom, but technically here you are uh, moving the camera back and forth. You're dollying forward and backwards. You're not zooming. You're not you're zooming means you're changing focal length. Okay. So you're physically kind of moving this forward and back. Hence, you see the distortion right there. Okay. So you're actually moving it. Okay. So that is mi uh, middle mouse uh, scroll. Okay. If I hold down the middle mouse button, and drag it I orbit okay so basically now I'm moving about I'm holding the camera and I'm going around the bike a lot of students at the beginning they get confused by this they think I'm rotating the bike they think they're rotating the bike no you're not that's why I kind of use this one you, you can it's grounded you can see a floor you see what's happening uh, you're you're physically moving around the bike you're not rotating the object rotating object means like this you're rotating that object you're doing something to it okay so uh, middle mouse drag you're orbiting okay and then if you hold down shift and middle mouse drag you are panning the camera okay so and that's it so scroll Let's call this zoom because that's the, its famous name. <laughs> We're zooming. Middle mouse, click and drag. You're orbiting the camera. You do a combination of shift and middle mouse drag. You pan. All right. So for those who doesn't have a scroll, let's say you have an old school three button mouse and it still works. If you substitute, uh, uh, if you click control, sorry, hold down control and middle click drag instead of shift you are zooming in so that's the equivalent right so why would you uh well let's say you have an old one then you you know doesn't have a scroll or you're eating cheetos and you happen to use do blender before washing your hands guess what you lose scroll then hold down control middle click drag instead of scrolling it then you got your zoom feature okay we also have that as an icon right here for those that uh, have like a tablet where they don't use mouse, they use a pen, all right? So you, if you click on the hand tool right there, the pen tool, just click and drag it, okay? Don't just click it. You have to click and drag. Then there's your pen. And then if you click the zoom, all right, I'll flip it over, all right? So there it is. This one switches to the camera view. So it's the same thing as pressing num, numpad zero. Okay. Clicking it takes you out. And then of course, orthographic perspective. So this is the same thing as pressing number five on the numpad. All right.
So we're viewing this. Uh, it's a little bit, I changed it sideways. Uh, I have my reasoning I forgot now. Um, I guess because when I started modeling this, it was still 276 the first time we moved to Blender. And then um, by default, uh, when you get a, a not, when you start Blender, it kind of goes like this. So it looks like you're looking at it, this is the x-axis. And I wasn't paying attention, I think. And then I just started modeling, but it's actually on the sideways. Okay, but anyway, it doesn't matter. I can easily repeat that, and I know my orientation. Okay, so in this world axis uh, on global coordinate system right here, you're viewing it where the red line is your x-axis. So this is movement that goes in a way like this, left and right. Okay, and then you have your green axis, which goes kind of in and out. All right. And then if we turn on the Z axis, I'm going to go here. Usually by default, it's not on. You see the blue axis goes up and down. You're probably wondering, all the programs, whether 2D or 3D, you're wondering, hey, why always been up and down? Why is Z up and down? That is in and out on a lot of programs. Well, the case for this one is that Blender is using um, a classic uh, coordinate system where Everything used to be on a table, kind of like uh, when they give you your GPS coordinates, X and Y, uh, no one drives up, right? Y doesn't go up, it just <laughs> it goes front and back, all right, whatever that location is. So think of this, X and Y, like you're on a table. Same thing as your screen, but your screen, they happen to rotate it this way. So you don't have to keep looking and break your neck when you're working on the screen if it's as if it's a table. So now it looks like Y goes up and down, but in reality, it does not. It is forward and back. And Z axis is not in and out. It's actually up and down. All right. You'll get used to it. I mean, just turn this thing on and then, you know, as long as you remember your color, X is always red, Y is always green, Z is always blue. So in Blender world, Z goes up and down. All right, so that's your coordinate. So if I need to move this, so let's say, let's talk about our transform tools now. Here they are. And I'll be using this a lot because uh, even though I love using keyboard shortcuts, there's benefit to actually seeing the tool at the beginning. You get a graphic representation or a gizmo of what the orientation is. Okay, so let's say if I select this object right here and I wanted to move it, the keyboard shortcut is simply G for grab. So if I press G, I can freely kind of move it. R to rotate. S to scale or resize. Okay, so G, R, S is your transform tool. Okay. There's also a uh, physical tool that you can activate. Here they are. Grab or move. There's a G. Rotate. And scale. So if I click this move tool right here, it's active on this tool, the selection, but you get to see the axis where you could actually move it. Okay, so I can then just grab, let's say, the x-axis to move it left and right, blue axis or Z, and then green. You can rotate that a bit, make it easier. All right, so again, you get a visual representation. What if you just want to move it in two, ax uh, in two axis? Uh, there it is. If you see that plane, if you click that, that means represent this arrow and that arrow, then it only goes up and down and left and right. And then if you want to move it the other way, you click that right there. And if you want to be at the top, you just want the green and red. There it is. If you want to move the whole thing freely, you grab inside the circle. Okay, let's do the rotation. Again, visual representation of where it will rotate. So if you want to rotate this along the x-axis, it will tumble forward and back. If you do the green one, again, based on orientation, okay, uh, this is the y-axis right here, so it will go clockwise and counterclockwise. And if you 
pick the blue one, it will spin. All right, then we go with our, and this one right here is rotation, the white one, rotation based on the view uh, angle. If you're looking at this way and then you rotate it, then it rotate based on your, your how you're viewing it, okay? Let's go to scale, keyboard shortcut is S, but if you click this, you get that one. All right, so if you just wanna scale this along the X axis, make it go that way, make it taller. So great for if you're animating a bouncing ball, right? You got your squash and stretch kind of deal. And then if you want to scale uniformly, okay, you grab the white circle. So this is also called, if you look at other programs, they call this one non-uniform, hence you're only scaling at a particular axis. If you want to scale, let's say, Z and X, again, same thing. You grab that plane right there. When you grab that, you only scale that way, and it's not scaling the green axis. Let me show it to you. You see it? It doesn't get any wider along this way because we're only doing the blue and the red. Okay, so those are your transform tools, a.k.a. translate or move or grab. Rotation is rotation, of course, and then scaling. Whenever you use any of this, uh, you can also use a combination of transform tool and, um, and the axis command. So let's say we're going to work on our keyboard shortcut now, right? I'm going to uh, turn off uh, the tool by selecting the select tool right here. So you always have to have a tool active, otherwise one of these will have to be active. So if I want to move this object along the x-axis without invoking the tool and grabbing the x-axis, I can press G and then X. Then when I move the mouse, you can see there's that lock line where it's at. Right? So if I want to go G to grab and then Y axis, press Y, it's locked into that, and so on and so forth. If I want to do rotation, let's say I want to spin it, that would be R and Z. There it is. But let's say I want to spin it uh, like about, I want to do 180 or 45 degree. You want like snapping increment temporarily. You can do R, Z, and hold down control. So when you're doing this, it's snapping by five degrees and you can almost eyeball it. You can just go 45 degree, 90 degree, 180, so on and so forth, okay? So remember, when you have your transform tools and you want to snap at five degree increment, okay? Uh, you can hold down control. Uh, let's say you're moving, G, hold down control. Okay, you will be snapping to whatever uh, the default one. I think it's on increment right here. Okay, so control, especially for rotation. You don't want to freely rotate. You want to be able to kind of control it so you'll be able to uh, do a divisible rotation. Okay, so that sums up the uh, navigation and transform in uh, Blender.